Well, I hadn't quite finished my degree when I took a job at the Long Island Biological Laboratory down in Cold Spring Harbor. And I got word that um, Dr. Hallowell Davis was coming down to give a lecture on hearing aids and the nerve conduction and whatnot. So I invited Dr. Bedell, my professor from Cornell, to come down for two weeks for that mm -hmm. conference, which he did. Because I'd worked with Dr. Bedell on hearing aid devices. He got patents on the mechanical amplifier thing for bone conduction mm -hmm. television and whatnot. So I knew he was interested in hearing devices. And I've got one of these two hearing aids on both sides. So uh, he came down. It, 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 does, does the design of your current hearing aid go all the way back to yes. the work that... Wow. That's right. The Sonotone Company took out patent licenses from Dr. Bedell on work that he and I had done <laughs> as I was a graduate student. Anyway, um, he came down and he saw my work because I had been completing my experimental work on my thesis project with microwaves at um, the Long Island Biological Laboratory in Cold Spring Harbor. So he said, after he looked at equipment over, he said, fine, finish up your reports and come on for your final, final exam. You graduate with a PhD at Cornell University. Then he said, can you take a couple of days off from the laboratory out here? I said, yes. I'd like to drive over to visit my sister in Montclair, New Jersey. I said, fine. So this little Buick automobile went over there. The next morning, he got up and he said, Tom, let's go up the street a block, two blocks from here, and visit that laboratory uh, operated by Alan Dumont. So we did. We walked in there. And I told him about my paper that I'd published already had by you, that time. Had you heard or met, heard of or met uh, uh, Alan Dumont? Alan Dumont I had never met that? him. Never, had you heard of him? I had heard of him because we bought a cathode ray tube from him which had high vacuum. And later on, that oscillograph that I built at Cornell had deflection plates to swing the beams around. I'd put a 10 million cycle signal on it and the beam went all out of focus because the early twos made by, by um, uh, Von Ardeen in Germany and by Bell Labs downtown um, had a trace of gas and the ions of gas would not deflect at that high frequency so the thing would go out of focus. So we had asked Alan Dumont to build a high vacuum tube for us. And it was that high vacuum tube that was in the oscillograph and I got it working up to 30 million cycles per second in the mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. high frequency scopes in the country. So um, Alan Dumont I had heard of because we bought that tube from him, right. but I hadn't been to his laboratory. Well, that morning, with Dr. Bedell, went up to the labs. Alan had one little storefront in a three little hat shop stores in hat Upper shops. Montclair, New Jersey. Oh, boy. He started his business in the basement of his house up in the boundary between Montclair and Cedar Grove. Mm -hmm. But um, by the time He'd moved into this little hat shop store. I talked to him, and he said, you know something about cathode ray tubes already? I said, yes, sir. I've worked with Dr. Bedell on it. So he said, when can you start working here? This was in June. I hadn't quite finished my thesis yet. So I said, how about November 1st of 1936? Still so in the Depression. I showed up at, at Montclair to start working with him at that time. 